One of the secrets to Photoshop is being able to pay attention to the subtle details. When you're working with Photoshop in a more professional capacity, um, doing true graphic design, you're often trying to, you're using Photoshop in ways like this. You're bringing something that wasn't in the image into it. Um, you're cleaning an image, adjusting things, adding things, and so on. You're essentially trying to fool a viewer's eye into thinking that's how the image was taken. That's what the original image was like. Um, when you're doing graphic arts in Photoshop, it may be a little different. You can be more playful. You don't have to be uh, maybe as detailed, and you're not necessarily trying to trick a viewer. So the way we're using it here, we really do need to pay attention to details and cover um, the little uh, intricacies of the image that pertain to you know, how logical it is and how believable. A lot of that comes down to dimension and shadow and being very subtle with it. I always say that there's two kinds of users with Photoshop. There's those who use it with a hammer and kind of just blast away and add too much shadow and too many effects and uh, too many filters and so on. And then there's those that use it with a feather where they very subtly work in the details and pay attention to uh, how an object such as this may truly interact optically when it's in that environment. So in this case, we've brought the puppy in. Right now he's overlapping her leg, and yet over here he looks like he's correctly sitting on the couch beside her. So we need to minimize this overlap. We have to essentially get rid of it, so that brings him further into the image beside her. And then we have to consider the shadows that he might cast. Now he's a little bright compared to the image. We can probably adjust that a bit. Um, we should be bringing in some shadow down here. Now, I definitely don't expect you guys to be um, truly uh, capturing every single little detail and making it 100%. If I had to do this for a client, put this puppy in this image, I would probably spend a few hours truly making sure that it's believable and accurate. So I don't expect that of you. And just know that the more you do this kind of thing, the better you get and the more details you start to recognize. You, you see the opportunity for those details. Okay, so the first thing we wanna do, working from the larger details to the smaller, is make him look like he's behind her knee. Now his layer is here, there he is. She's on that layer, that background layer. So I'm going to add a just a basic layer mask to his. So down in the bottom of the layer palette here is the layer mask. So I'm selected on his layer. I'm going to click that. And you'll see when I clicked that, it added in here what we can consider as kind of an overlay or a window. Um, this is what we're going to be working on. It is filled with white, so we don't see it, but masks are a positive and negative. So think of when, if you put on a Halloween mask, the mask is on top of you and you need to create the holes so that you can um, see through it. Or another way of putting it is your, if you put a mask on, you have to, uh, in the reverse way, decide what is being covered up. So here we have kind of the mask without its holes. And we applied the mask to the dog. It's white, so we need to use our brush tool, which is over here, and we're going to put some black onto that mask. This again is something it takes a, a little bit of um, thinking and uh, getting used to because you're working in positive negatives, you're not working with color, but the brush tool is how we're going to do this. So I added the mask, I'm selected on the mask. Here, if you have this, 
I'm selected on the layer. And if I were to brush something, it would go right on the layer. And that's not what we want. So I'll undo that. But here I'm on the mask. I've selected on the mask. So now I know again, that's what I'm working on. Always know that you have to select or designate what you're working on. So I've done that, selected the mask. I've selected a brush and we'll look at adjusting that in a moment. And I'm going to be adding or removing from this white. So I'm going to do that with black. The opposite of white is black. So I'm going to switch my foreground color here, which is what the brush paints. It always paints the foreground. I'm going to switch it with that little arrow. And then I'll do just a quick sample here. When I paint with that brush, the black, it's getting rid of that part of the image. So you can see on the mask. So you're selecting the mask, but you're brushing on the image. So I'll undo that. So now we need to consider our brush size. So I've selected on the mask. I've selected the brush. I've switched my foreground color to black. And now I need to adjust my brush size. We want to put him behind the knee. So I can actually change the opacity of my layer here so I can see through and see her knee. So I'm just going to adjust that a bit. We can bring it back after. So my brush right now is actually pretty much a perfect match for the circumference of her knee there. So that's good. I can work with that. I can start there. I'm going to zoom in a bit, space command and click and still clicked on my mask and uh, my foreground color black. I'm just going to click there. So I have my brush and I'll click there. Now you're going to notice though that as I do that, the spread of that brush is getting rid of stuff I don't want to. That's okay. That's fine for the moment. Now I'm going to reduce the size of my brush because I want to get a little more particular here. So I'm going to do that with my square bracket. My left or right square bracket will adjust the size of my brushes. So I'm using my left square bracket. Those are near the P on your keyboard. But I can also go up to this tool here and change the size, change the hardness. And quite honestly, you do have to play with these and try it and see what happens. These, there's no formula to when you're working in this kind of situation, there's, there's no specific numbers that are an absolute and they're always going to work. You have to just test these out. It becomes trial and error. And eventually, like anything else, you just know what's going, going to be too large, what's going to be too small. So in this case, I went a little smaller and I'm going to go even smaller with my square bracket and the softness of my brush is zero or the hardness is zero. So that means that I'm not going to have any fine lines and I'm just pressing return by the way. When I open that, I can click or I just press return to close it. Now I'm going to up the opacity again to 100 because I want to see how much that spread was. So I'm on my mask again. I'm on black. I'm just going to get rid of these things that are overlapping. And I'm taking away too much, but that's okay because I can add it back in. So I'm making sure I know where her leg is. I want the ear overlapping her arm, so I'm going to leave that area alone. And now I want to put some of him back because obviously I took too much away. So I'm going to, I'm making sure again, I'm still on the mask. I have my brush. I'm going to switch this back to white because I'm going to add white back in on that mask. And I'm going to reduce the size of my brush even further. And I'm just going to work my way in and you'll see it, the, the mask in the menu here will be reacting as well. And I'm just going to get closer and closer 
and I may at some point have to increase the hardness of my brush so that I don't have too much spread. So I'm going to make sure I get all of what I want of him showing up to her jeans. But it's still a little soft there. It still looks photoshopped. So that's where I want to increase the hardness of my brush. I'll go to about 50 or 60 percent. And then back here, I'm going to go back to black, make sure I'm selected, and then I'm going to add, I'm going to take a little bit of that fuzziness away. And get rid of that overlap there. And I'm going to do Command Option 0 or Control Alt 0 on a PC so that I get actual pixels. Oops, Control Alt 0. So and it still looks a little fuzzy there. I would have to fix that up if I had the time. But now we can see the logic of the image is a little more accurate. He's tucked behind her leg, her ears, his ear is overlapping her arm. He's seated properly on the couch. His size is seems appropriate for the size of the dog, uh, her size, the couch, and so on. Everything seems um, appropriate in scale. So now we need to look at things like when we get into the details, things like shadow. Where would he be casting shadow on her? Probably by the ear here. And where would she be casting some shadow on him? Maybe in here behind her knee. And where would he be casting some shadow on the couch? Probably down in here. 